better. How are you doing artisans? I hope you're having a wonderful week. It's a bit chilly today isn't it? I've had to pop my cardi on. Um, I hope you are having a brilliant week and of course it's a Marla Wednesday. I don't know why I have to sing it, I just do. Um, and the two stamps that are on offer today um, are the fabulous which is that beautiful gorgeous curly hair with um two fabulous sentiments and stay chic hi tracy hi sheena is my sound okay just give me a thumbs up so i know that you can hear me and just not funny home sounds um also the other stamp was a fish absolutely beautiful if you love that zentangle effect but you um don't want or don't have the time to achieve it thanks tracy um then of course this is beautiful because it's that samurai uh, Japanese fighting fish with all them beautiful flourishes absolutely gorgeous if you've got a fan of fish in the family or if you sell your cards it's a great masculine card absolutely brilliant sorry I'm slipping off my chair here too many pillows <laughs> okay so I'm going to show you two variations today using the one stamp I'm going to be using the fabulous now I've just been online literally before I come on here and I can see you've bought them all haven't you so well done if you got your fabulous the fish I believe is hanging on by a thread there's only a few left and of course once they've gone they're gone <laughs> exactly so hiya Christine hope you're doing really well hope all of my friends are having a wonderful day so the I'm going to be using the fabulous and like I said I know it's sold out I'm sorry <laughs> I know so you've got this beautiful curly hair with just the eyes which I love because then you can position it in so many different positions hi Joanne you've got your large fabulous stamp your stay chic always girls um, and then your small fabulous as well okay hi Enid Tracy hope everyone's doing really well oh I see that you did some Santangle absolutely fabulous yeah used on the phone cover she oh I know it's just oh delish pride of place honestly it really is that phone cover so I'm going to be showing you two different styles of cards today uh, using that beautiful stamp so I'm going to turn you around now so you can see exactly what I'm up to here we go hopefully we will stay in position today I've tightened everything up you see so hopefully we should be fine you'll notice I've got a piece of vellum here I'll be doing something with that in just a second. But first of all, I've taken two, um, this is sort of like seven by four, absolutely perfect to apply this beautiful stamp. And do you know what I've noticed since lockdown? So many girls are embracing their curls. They're using the curly girl method, which I just think is amazing. And especially with the detail of this stamp of that beautiful curls, let's embrace it so I'm just placing these onto my watercolor cardstock I'm using the fabulous up there as well so I'm just going to pick these up using my Eureka really really simple now it doesn't matter that I haven't got a um, magnet on that small piece because it's quite simple to go back and do that so I'm going to be using my Versafine Claire this is morning mist which is just off black it, I just find it's not as harsh so I'm just going to go straight over to my stamp really really simple and laden it up with black ink try not to scrub it as you're adding the ink just apply the ink layers obviously if you are using eureka you can always go back and reapply if you miss bits by using your magnet so now i'm just going to apply some pressure a bit of fingertip dancing over the top really really simple and we should see that crisp beautiful image so look at that how lush is that i know so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to take my sentiment poppy to a side that piece of vellum that i showed you earlier i'm just i'm not going to move my stamp this is my stamp piece of paper that i've just stamped and i'm literally going to just move that out the way pop that into position and now i'm going to emboss so and I don't need the whole of the stamp, it's pretty much just that side. So I'm just gonna use some embossing powder. I'm using uh, embossed stamp pad, clear. 
really really easy and I don't need that sentiment either at the moment so I'm gonna be embossing on vellum so and this will be an overlay okay so I'll just make sure I've got all that detail give it a good old squish there we go beautiful so now I'm just gonna add some embossing powder I love embossing on vellum it's just absolutely beautiful it really really is so I'm just gonna add I'm using thirsty brush true black did you get anything in the sale for the thirsty brush sale I was naughty but there we go so then you're just gonna flick to make sure you get the excess off then I'm just gonna heat set this nice and quickly making sure there's no bits now you may be thinking so why are you embossing on vellum over the top of the image this top layer is not going to have any additional color on but the underneath I am going to paint so what that does is it gives you that false illusion that it's actually painted which is beautiful and it's a really nice technique method especially using this beautiful stamp now I find as well on vellum your heat embossing embosses a lot quicker which is brilliant and you can see straight away how gorgeous is that it's so pretty okay so I'm going to come back now to my card that I was originally doing on my pre-stamped and this will go perfectly over the top when we put it on but right now we're going to get painting so I'm just going to move over some bitsy bob hopefully you can see where I am and I will open my Himmy watercolors these are my favorite paints if I'm doing watercolor in I must admit I really am um, my second favorite is goosh purely because it's much heavier uh, impact but for watercolor in this is the most perfect palette pop along to the stamps by me website go and have a look honestly they've got some cracking bits over there at the moment so now I'm gonna go straight into water pick up this brown it doesn't matter there was a bit of blue in there and a bit black not too much so it's quite a nice chocolatey brown and then I'm just gonna start getting some color on okay this is almost like your crumb base if you like if you was icing a cake for instance you get your crumb base layer on and then you work with that and that's how I see painting it's the simplest way of how to describe you get your color on and then you work out your light from there so obviously you don't go to uh, you wouldn't go black for instance straight away if you was adding that color because that would you wouldn't be able to go anywhere further with that because that is your darkest color unless you used acrylic to go over the top or goosh that would be equally um, work as well but I always find just get the color on and then it gives you more ideas of where you want to go with it so I've got this lovely sort of chocolatey brown um, oatmeal colour now I'm just going to add a bit darker now but more detail and then I'm just going to come in and just start highlighting almost some of these curls and aren't they magnificent I have hair jealousy with the beautiful curls I really do especially the corkscrew do you remember in the 80s and, and sort of early 90s we all had those spiral perms I had one yep it was so curly I had to sleep with my hair in a ponytail because otherwise it was just it'd be everywhere it was brilliant so I'm just adding a fine layer of detail. Now also, when you are doing skin, it's completely obviously up to you what color skin you do, what um, style of skin you do. But I just think with this beautiful hair, I think that she should be a beautiful, gorgeous, so I'm just bringing a little bit of that darker and you'll notice as well I just popped a little bit of ochre in there as I pull this round I 
and can you see how very easy it is to just allow that colour to fall in it's beautiful and you can just keep building up you'll notice as well I use a lot of water to bleed out that's fine we'll add a bit more okra just to deepen to create some shading notice I'm using the very fine tip of my round brush just to pull those layers round I'm also just going to start adding a bit more colour around the eyes because naturally when you look at eyes we do have darker areas so again add in that okra and we can very lightly just bring that to the foreground it does make it a lot easier if you use a really nice tight round brush because then you can see exactly where you are just going to a little bit more there we go and I'm going to use my brush wet brush again just to feed that water around to let it flow around I'm just going to pull some more of this dark there we go and then remember the bridge of the nose will come down so you can have these little highlights around that area you see very easy I'm just going to add a tiny bit of black to my uh, brown that I've done here and then I'm just going to bring a little bit more shade in just under the hairline and then just a little bit around the face nice and simple don't forget when you are using watercolor paints it always dries two or three shades lighter so always have that obviously in the back of your mind because you will find that you get a big difference I'm just adding a little black now but and you can see I'm being quite sporadic with it with a wet brush over the top just to blend this will give you natural shading of them fabulous curls and they are divine aren't they <laughs> i know so i'm just going to carry on painting away being quite sporadic i've got a bit of a dry brush here but that's fine because i want to get that color on and then just use a wet brush to fill that detail so you just go over and back round again okay so let me have a look at her face now I'm just going to pick up a little bit more brown with a little tad of pink in and what we're going to do is we're just going to start adding in a bit more detail there we go so obviously we want that lighter area a bit more in that hair this is the chocolate brown that is within the kit and I'm just going to exaggerate that colour away now with our eye here what I tend to do is I get my coloured pencils in here and I'm going to get green and then I'll just grab a brown outliner just finish off that dimension that we have and you can really exaggerate those eyelashes if you want <laughs> so again we've got the beautiful and then I've just come up onto the eyebrows feel doing our own little microblade in there lovely and then on the center of that eye as well I need a tiny bit of a highlight around and then the black in the center so I'm just going to dry this off now really, really quickly and then I'm going to do some more background work. Perfect! 
right, so my actual base card that this is going in has now got water on, never mind. Um, so I have a black card, then on top of my black card I've placed some really pretty paper. I've got my mount board that I'm using as well. And first of all, I've taken lots of different pieces of different card stocks, um, all obviously along the similar tones absolutely gorgeous to use next I'm going to come along and I'm using my Imala stencil so I'm just going to place that on top there I'm going to pick up a little bit of color I'm going to go for vintage photo and then maybe some gathered twigs I'm thinking but let's have a look at this first of all so I'm just going to pick up some vintage photo and I'm just going just on these white edges really that's where I really I would like to use this stencil this stencil was part of the chapter 14 collection absolutely beautiful if you didn't see the stencils or the stamps pop along to the stamps by me website go and have a look I just rotate it round add the stencil again and then we shall just lightly not too heavy you don't need it too um, bold it's more of just an accent that we are adding to the card so that I'll come back to that in a second and now I will come over to this this beautiful stamp and again I'm just using a little bit a vintage photo just on the very edge you really don't need to go to town because obviously we want the detail to be on um, the fabulous stamp so I'm just going to turn this add that detail to the corner just as it sort of creeps along and you can see that I've twisted my stencil slightly to maximize the, um, the different dimensions that I'm using again a bit more just up here lovely so now we can start constructing and popping this all together. So first things first, I'm going to take my card, make sure I'm the right way up. Yep, yep. And I'm very easily going to adhere this clean on to my project. Now I'm going to use gathered twigs as my base to go around. So I'm just going to wipe it around that edge. And this frames it almost like a mat, but you don't need a mat. So now just add in that frame. I'll adhere that very quickly to my card, like so. There we go, lovely. Then I've also got a mat to go on top of that. Now, I know you lose a lot of color of the background, but it's not about the background papers. It's all about this focal point. So, Adding onto this focal point now, I'm going to add a mat, but before I do that, I'm going to line my embossing up to make sure we are in exactly the right position. So you just layer it up, fold that layer, just make sure, because if it's slightly out, it just won't look as good. So be aware that it needs to be quite tight. So I'm just carrying on, making sure that I am in the right position. Yep, yep. And then I'll just simply fold that over. Adhere that down on the reverse, because no one gets to see that bit. And then we will simply add that to the black mat using foam. But before I do that, again, I'm going to use the gathered twigs just to go around the edge of that stamping. Really easy. And you can continue it on top of the vellum as well. So now I'm just going to go around. Here we go, a bit more. And then I'll just use them foam pads to add to the black. So I've got a mat around it. Then I will add to card. Also, we do need to add the sentiment. Now I've got a beautiful mat around that, and that will go on top of my card. Oh, look at that. I do like it when I've actually pre put foam pads on. Makes it happier, doesn't it? Quicker and easier. 
So now I'm just going to place this on top here. Now my sentiment that I stamped, the fabulous, I'm going to use again that stencil, just a little bit of it. Choose your favourite piece if you like. And then you don't need to actually put any more ink on. You should have enough on your brush because it's only subtle we want. There we go. Then I've also taken a piece of vellum, popped it on a piece of black card and then I'm going to add in my sentiment on there nice and easy and then we will add that to the card here we go don't forget to go around the edge just so everything links together so you simply wipe in your ink pad around your sentiment pop that on there another foam pad and then we'll go straight up just under her face just there there we go hi your friends how are we doing <laughs> sorry I was, I was in craft mode so there we go fabulous so we have multiple layers on there we've got that beautiful vellum over the top we've got that color work it's all underneath so when you actually look at it it looks coloured. It's very, very clever. Thank you, friends. I'm glad you like that one. Thank you. They're very, so simple to make. They really, really are. And once you get into it, it's so much fun as well. Right, the next project I'm going to be creating is I'm going to do background work. So let's turn you around, my friends, and you will be able to see exactly what I'm doing. So back with my Eureka and this fabulous stamp again so I'm just going to take my white piece of uh, watercolor card and this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp in multiple places so again using that stamp making sure that I'm nicely stuck down and I'm going to be using the gathered uh, twigs I do like this one this is an oxide so it's quite nice you can get a lot of coverage quite quickly but then also you've got that oxide ability to be able to really get inky and have fun so now I'm just placing that stamp let's have a look oh no we need a bit more perfect so now I'm just moving it along down here that'll be just right pick that up but this time I'm going to stamp using vintage photo nice nice then I'm going to move her down again a tad now don't forget this is just a background that I'm creating so it doesn't have to be perfect as such and I'm going to be using the frayed burlap on the bottom here which is a much deeper darker brown there we go so now I'm going to take if I can just find them these brilliant stamps and I'm going to be using the stay sheet so we could just place that and just fill the gaps in using the gathered twigs there we go move that one over bit there and you may just be able to squeeze no oh yep we can go over the hair there we 
we go beautiful so this is going to be my base for my background so i'm just going to take this off because we're going to start doing some more ink work and i need to add some water so on top of this now i'm just going to use my spritzer there we go nice and easy i'm going to come in as well with my watercolor palette and i'm going to oh, i'm not going to use that brush it's got green paint on oh no i'm going to come in using okra and we are just filling in some of this color so you can go into with your browns just making sure that all of that background has got paint on. Next, what I'm going to do, this is the fun bit, I'm going to use a little bit of bubble wrap. So if I hold it down in the centre and then just use that bubble wrap to create a background. So now I'm just going to dry this off, not all of it. as well, salt works really well. So then I'm going to come over and I'm going to use my script stamp. Now this is um, a Marla script that is handwritten scripts, I believe we we um, called it. I'm just going to wipe my urethra off a little bit. Have a little tidy up as we do. So now I'm going to pop this back into my eureka using that beautiful handwritten script. I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to be using the frayed burlap on this now. So we just apply the ink, stamp. Now, because it's wet, this is what it does. I love it. Absolutely love it. This is how you can get some real good, um, fabulous backgrounds using this sort of style of technique. I mean, literally, I've used three stamps and some ink. Super, super simple. So now I'm just going to pull this one down. Bit of fingertip dancing. There we go. Dry it off. I'm going to come back in with my frayed burlap now and I'm just going to run it along the ends, all along them ends. Now don't worry if it bends and buckles slightly and you get sort of um, thicker lines than other edges, don't worry about it. Honestly, it gives your work more character. I'm also just adding a little bit more free ink at the corners because then that just pulls it all together very nicely. So now I'm going to mat this onto black. Then I'm just going to add, I've already pre-stamped, obviously you've seen me stamp her fabulous enough now. So I'm just going to add this to my project and I have... Oh, where's that image going? There we go. 
so now I have this so now I'm just going to very simply do a tad of inking around this I'm gonna leave her quite highlighted really I don't want to take away from that beautiful imagery so really what I'm doing is I'm just sort of highlighting her so how you do that is you simply leave a white a halo if you like around her of white and that that just makes her pop so much more there we go I'm gonna use that frayed burlap just as the edges again a little bit of ink work just what's left around the fabulous exactly in the same method as we've done with um, the imagery now what we're going to do is we are going to add her at a jaunty angle of course just like so I've got my sentiment here which is just going to anchor that if you like just down slightly I'm going to take a black biro pen I'm going to do a free frame basically a free frame means it's doodles um, it doesn't have to be perfect it's more about enjoying yourself creating the layers that you need so then you go over with your second frame but you slightly go off you don't copy it if you know what I mean it's more about creating that doodle if you like I'm also going to go around the sentiment really simple so you do one block then you simply go over not too wibbly but you'll work it out just enough you can also put like little crosses or little stitches in I like sort of almost like little hashtags and there we go hi your friends how are we doing doodles all no they don't and what you need to do is just stick with it darling just stick with it so there we go there's the second project from today where did I put the first one so the first one we had was that beautiful gorgeous stamp on the vellum as well so you've got that overlay you've got the painting underneath the second one's creating that repetitive background now look at that would you even believe that them girls are under there it's fabulous isn't it stick with it with the doodle frames my friends at first I know where you're coming from when I first started doing them I was like oh it looks a bit rubbish looks like I've just sort of lent pen on it but honestly stick with it and soon you will love it and you'll feel confident the more confident you get with it the more amazing projects that you can create so there we go my friends I hope you've had a wonderful um, Amala inspiration and I look forward to seeing you next week now don't forget friends of course there is chapter 15 now I don't know when it's coming but I know it's coming soon so keep your eyes peeled for that and I will speak to you soon take care my friends my beautiful artisans and I will see you next Wednesday look after yourself and each other and I will see you soon take care and if you get stuck on the doodles just drop me a message and I'll do some for you to copy okay take care my friends see you later and soon bye